Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. This is Brilliant Faces with Dr. Sadia Sir Khan. I'm Dr. Sadia Sir Khan and I have a special guest for everyone today and that is Michelle Chaudhary who is a human rights activist in Pakistan. She's also the president of the Cecil and Iris Chaudhary Foundation. Hello Michelle. Hello Sadia. Nice seeing you after a long time. <laughs> Same here. How have you been? Fine, thank you. Thank you for inviting me and uh, for this for doing this. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you, and you're doing Same some here. important work in Pakistan. So let's start with a little bit about your father, Group Captain Cecil Chaudhary. So yeah, so my father actually uh, was in the Pakistan Air Force. He was a fighter pilot in the Pakistan Air Force, mm -hmm. and uh, he went. Uh, uh, to one of the highest levels of professionalism in the Air Force. And uh, he was a very highly decorated uh, person in Pakistan. He's been, he was awarded the Satari Jurat. And then after that, he was given the award of the Satari Basalat. And uh, so he, after spending like 28 years in the Pakistan Air Force, my father uh, went into education in the fields of education and human rights. So he uh, became a very active and a very bold advocate for human rights in Pakistan, uh, primarily for the rights of minority, religious minorities, as well as uh, the rights of all underprivileged across Pakistan. He also uh, spoke out and, and created a lot of, lot of awareness for uh, children with disabilities because, as you know, uh, in Pakistan, that was not a very, uh, you know, there was not much awareness on that issue yeah. as well so um, yeah so that's what he was doing and he because after leaving the air force he was not somebody who was just going to sit back and not do anything so he started uh, you know in, 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 the situation in pakistan is such that unfortunately um, uh, the environment in pakistan is 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 the kind that if you have a voice you have to use it mm -hmm. so uh, that's what he did and he spoke very boldly across Pakistan and across the world actually on issues that uh, the underprivileged and the marginalized were facing in Pakistan. So yeah, so then, so that was his area of work. And then of course, after he passed away in 2012, uh, he was also awarded the President's Award for Pride of Performance uh, for his services in the field of education and in the field of human rights. So yes, he was a, a very highly decorated uh, person. So that's uh, why I started this foundation. After my my background, Sadia was from the corporate sector. I was the marketing head for Dawn newspapers in Lahore, and then after that, I uh, was the regional head for the Dawn News uh, TV channel. So my area of work was more in the corporate sector and more in general management and operations. Uh, but then after my parents passed away, my mother passed away in 2010 and then my father passed away in 2012. So I decided to start this uh, foundation primarily to uh, keep their names alive and to keep my father's work alive. Right. To, you know, carry forward, of course, uh, the CICF, as we call ourselves, the Cecil and Iris Chaudhary Foundation. Mm -hmm. We cannot do what Cecil Chaudhary did, but we can at least keep that, uh, you know, keep it going and keep his uh, his work alive and carry forward uh, whatever he started. So that's when I decided in 2012 to quit my job. It was a very good job. Very, you know, um, my career was at a very good place at that time. But I quit that and I started this because um, primarily, like I said, to keep my parents' name alive, but also. For myself, you know, there comes a time when you feel that you need to uh, do something for society. You need to pay back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought that there was something missing. I thought there was something missing and there was something that there is something more to what I am required to do as a person. I, I mean, God puts us all in this world to do something. And I just thought that, you know, I was not doing what I am required to do. So, but now, starting the foundation and working on the, the on uh, with the marginalized, downtrodden, um, raising awareness on the human rights violations that go, that are in Pakistan, that has sort of, you know, completed me as a person. I feel like I am where I'm required to be. Right. So, uh, so that is how we started the CICF, and we are now in our uh, 13th. Uh, we started it in 2012, so this is, is almost 12 years now. 
12, 13 years that we are we have been functioning. We uh, work with people across. We are a secular organization. It's not that you mm-hmm. know we work on Muslims or with religious minorities. We work for anybody who needs help. Right. And so we work on two platforms. The CICF has uh, a one aspect, which is the human rights aspect, where we advocate for the rights of of uh, underprivileged, marginalized, religious minorities. And wherever rights violation takes place, we talk. We we're also talking about on child sexual abuse, which is a very big problem in Pakistan. So we work on that as well. We are working on underage marriages. So uh, so that is an, uh, one aspect of the foundation. And the other aspect of the foundation is social development, community development work, social welfare work, where again we are working on education, women empowerment, on uh, uh, you know developing women to sort of sustain them for them uh, earn for themselves we have skill development work going on and there's a lot of awareness as well awareness work also on on you know we do disease awareness programs we on how to highlight various issues that women may encounter and education is one of our primary uh, areas of work as well so yeah so this is what we do and another uh, and of course among all this whenever there's a disaster management we do that as well like floods earthquakes mm-hmm. uh, Pakistan, Pakistanis need help. We try to be there for them. How has the response been? Are people responsive? Are they helpful? Do they usually cooperate with you when you know you need help from them or you need their assistance? I think um, people, the response of people has been has been phenomenal. I mean, I uh, whenever we have set out to do anything, you know, our work is project based work. Like for example, if we if we we work on a project, so obviously we it's it's funded by a cert, by a certain funding uh, organizations. Mm-hmm. But uh, whenever we have done work, like for last year when Pakistan was hit by the floods, mm-hmm. the flood relief work that we did, we were doing flood relief work across Punjab, and the response from from people across the world has been so phenomenal. I mean, I just have to put, I have to put out an appeal for for support. And uh, the support comes in, so people are very, very. And I thank. Um, I first of all, I think I thank God for for uh, putting me in a place, and and for people trusting me with their, you know, they know that if the, if if they're supporting CICF, the funds that are being given will go to the right people. Yeah. So I thank yeah. everybody for their trust, and then, but the response has been phenomenal. If you know, just a few months ago in Pakistan, in Punjab, there was a. There was an incident where Christian homes were burnt. Mm-hmm. There were hundreds of Christian homes were burnt down, and uh, so we've been supporting those people as well. And the response from across the world has been so phenomenal. I mean, people have stepped forward and helped in an, in amazing, amazing ways, and we, that enables us then to you know work in a more effective, effective manner. So uh, we've been helping these people, families, restore their lives, rebuild homes. And of course, the government does compensate, but then there's so many other things apart from um, from material compensation. You know what I mean? If when um, there's psychological damage, nobody talks about the psychological damage in an in in a situation like this. Right. If uh, yeah. there's there's a, a mob violence and and uh, children, especially with children, when they see their homes getting burned, of course, material uh, materialistically, the we are able to fulfill that homes are rebuilt goods are put back into the house and everything but the psychological damage stays and uh, the, the trauma of that event so we do we we try to help in that way as well by setting up little uh, you know children's centers where we work with the children mm-hmm. try to eliminate um, you know uh, there's resentment in the in in people when something like this happens. So yeah. we try to yeah. you know eliminate that as well. So uh, yeah, so that's the kind of work we do. And uh, yes, coming back to your question, the response has been really really good. Excellent. So uh, coming back to uh, since you mentioned it, the trauma that children go through, like maybe in uh, Palestine, maybe the ऐसे ही कुछ हो रहा है ना. Exactly. तो ये trauma जो है इसके साथ आप लोग कैसे deal करते हो? I mean, uh, I think you're the professional on this. So you, you, uh, you know, um, we do not uh, have the the tools to deal professionally 
on a psychological issue that anybody is facing but what we do is now for example uh, uh, some years ago the same incident happened in lahore where over 300 uh, christian homes were ransacked and burnt literally razed to the ground one little girl came running up to me and she said ke um, uh, baaji ye musalmanon ne hamare ghar jala diye hmm, hmm. so that really hit me when she said muslims have burnt our homes that hit me because there were 640 children so what we did then is to counter that kind of a of a uh, uh, thought in children's mind we set up a children's play center and what i did was i all my volunteer i picked up all the children and brought them to the play center every morning the children were supposed to come there and all my volunteers were muslims to reinforce the fact that muslims are not bad people and we we reinforce that the kids these are also muslims who are playing with you who are reading stories to you who are singing songs with you we had all types of activities happening at the play center there was storytelling there was painting there were people uh, students coming there with their guitars and singing songs with them and just uh, sort of you know uh, creating a happy environment for them to reinforce the fact this is what muslims are so in order to you know re uh, restore their faith Mm-hmm. in in uh, so so you see this is the kind of work we do when to affect to sort of remove the trauma in 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 some kind of a way and to, the most important thing is for me is that i don't want these children growing up with any kind of resentment in their hearts against any other religion or any other person mm-hmm. we i had a team of volunteers they were they were all muslim volunteers they were going around telling them ke ji musliman to hum hain and we are here to help you so you know um and to to reinforce the fact that uh, don't get this in your mind that you know this is what muslims have done to you because we are we are muslims who are here to help you so yeah so that's that's one of the ways we do this mm-hmm. and if anything uh, then we do have some uh, uh there are one, one or two psychologists who we deal with who can come in and then you know sort of do some counseling with the children uh to eliminate any kind of trauma like there's a child a lot of children in that area uh, could not sleep at night because they would go to sleep and wake up with nightmares because the aag lagi hai chal raha hai and you know they they were having that kind of problem so we did a range uh, because that was beyond us to deal with so we did a range for professional uh, support over there such a complex issue in pakistan and everywhere else in the world and you doing your part so that's very commendable michelle we try to sadia even if it's a drop in the ocean we try to do whatever we can and even like you know we had recently uh, around christmas time we did a christmas uh, carnival and uh, we highlighted over there to those children what's happening in palestine and we thought they should know that there are children across the world who are also facing issues they're not the only ones who who have been you know hurt in some way so we highlighted the palestine issue there with children what's happening with children in palestine and then we had this wall over there where where the children could write messages to the children of palestine so all the children uh, they went there they put their hand impressions they wrote messages and uh, so you know the, that was kind of to let them know that you know uh, there there are worse things happening in the world so when you look at yourself you must be thankful to god that you know um, uh, you you are uh, you're not the only one who's facing issues so we really highlighted that because we wanted them to know that what children are going through in other parts of the world as well right as so michelle is mein uh, jo yahan ki local authorities and like you said they were helpful in the sense that they compensated financially so how about uh, the police uh, uska kya role hai and were they helpful ya yeah, aapka kya unke sath it's, it's 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 very complicated because Uh, for example uh, compensation to government ki taraf se aati hai na when when something like this happens the government is very, is is uh, <laughs> i always say the government is very quick in giving compensation compensation is not the end of the solution we want justice why did this happen right. who did it the people who did it must be brought to justice uh, ek, ek, they must be punished so that it doesn't happen again or before anybody tries to do it again wo do dafa sochega ke you know i can be punished for this impunity has to end that is what we always demand that the environment of impunity has to end but as far as police there have been lot of incidents where the police have been just standing there as 
uh, and looking at this happening and not come forward to to stop it um there was an incident if you uh, in 2014 in kasur where a christian husband and wife woman was 7 months pregnant she was they were he, she was tied to the tractor and dragged around the village both the husband and wife by a mob of 3000 people they were uh, they were you know bricklin workers jo bhatta mazdoor hote they they were bricklin workers they were dragged around the village and then thrown into the burning furnace of a bricklin the bricklin that they worked for they were thrown into the burning furnace of that bricklin in front of 3000 people who just stood by and looked at this happen including police nobody stepped forward to stop that from happening and the, and even worse than that is that three little children 6 years old 4 years old and 2 years old witnessed this happening to their parents it was so horrible it was so horrible that uh, it sent shivers not only across pakistan but across the world that how could how could humanity stoop to that level and they were thrown into the bricklin nothing was left of them just you know uh, when they tried to look find something there was just some bones and teeth and whatever they could find but that's what they did to this couple shama and shazad and uh, police just stood by and saw it happen did nothing to stop it i have those children with me my foundation takes care of those three children we did not want them to live there and live in the horror day in and day out and uh, they live in lahore now they we put them into schools they have grown up now the boy is 15 years old the girl the two girls are also one is 14 and one is 12 but uh, <clears throat> they're going to school and everything but again that is something that they're not going to forget ever what happened to their parents so as far as the police thing is uh, this is how it is this is a, this is how it is sometimes they just stand by and let it happen have there so, been any incidents where the police has been helpful there have been incidents where police has also been able to come forward and and sort of uh, uh, prevent in incidents from happening some mm-hmm. you know prevent a a, a mass um, a uh, uh, mob violence from happening and uh, there have been some incidents uh, but uh, that those are very few the majority of the incidents when we f- see it has been uh, with no police uh, police doing nothing there have been so many incidents of mob violence we've had uh, the christian community itself has had numerous occasions of mob violence when nobody stepped forward to to sort of you know prevent it from happening so uh, uh, michelle what uh, things are they getting better are they getting worse where do we stand as a country sadia uh, pakistan is is at this moment going through numerous numerous issues i have never ever given up hope in pakistan i always feel that you know we have to stay put and it is us who has to make it better and inshallah it 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 will it has to you know you will reach a level where you can't go lower you have to go higher so uh, uh, it, it, there are no numerous issues as far as i am concerned our work is concerned and when if i talk about religious minorities and non muslims in pakistan there are numerous problems numerous problems at every level and uh, for example even in at school level mm-hmm. at university level there, there are problems there I I'm, I'm sure like you also must be remembering that there was a time in Pakistan when we used to go to school we never knew the religion of the other person we we did not know kiska kya mazhab hai because um, that was not even uh, not even a concern but now it's not like that and religious intolerance has exceeded all limits in Pakistan now it has become so so terrible in Pakistan that um you're afraid you don't know what may happen next you don't know who who's your who may turn against you just because of uh, uh, your religion so the the society is 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 uh, is very uh, uh, the, the religious intolerance is very deep rooted and um, people uh, people kind of uh, i know for sure non muslims and not in our in 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 area, in circles in which we we live mm-hmm. but you mm-hmm. think the non uh, affluent or the underprivileged communities it is very very difficult like my my house help my maid right. she had to right. uh, vacate her home like three times in the last two months because the owner of the house realized that she is a christian and he didn't want her to live in his house 
on rent. So you see, that's the kind of mindset that happens. So, so, and it's it's there and it's it's very deep rooted. It's going to take a long, long time before we can sort of uh, you know change that. Right. I think education is very important because. Uh, very important. Yes, I mentioned and that. Very, you know, an inclusive education system where you include everybody is included. Where you have these systems where uh, it's not it's a non-inclusive uh, education. Education curriculum is is adding more fuel to fire. It has to be an inclusive education system where, uh, like for example, I I. Uh, uh, or we were at a meeting with one of the politician, political parties, uh, uh, head of a political party some days ago. Mm -hmm. And that's what I told him. I said, it needs to be in the curriculum what non-Muslims have done for Pakistan. They, have, they are non-Muslims from the time Pakistan was created. From 1947 right up to today, the role of non-Muslims have been removed from our textbooks. They used to be in our textbooks when we were in school and, and before that. The role of non-Muslims were in the textbooks. What what contributions they've had, but then in the in the Zia ul Haq time, that was eventually taken out of the textbooks. So that is not there anymore. People need to know what non-Muslims have also done for for Pakistan, and the contributions are are there, and they're 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 uh, phenomenal. What what has been done? So jab tak ye nahi hoga, jab tak people are not told uh, what and you know. I taught this in school and it has to start from education you that's what you said was absolutely right it's, it's the education system that needs a massive type of changing in order to uh, sort of you know help restore the you know put an end to this problem right aapke father ke bahut famous si koi quote hai which i think <laughs> we, we grew up uh, hearing that which is about being human which is more important my father yes my father used to say that uh, by faith i am a christian but my religion is, is humanity and you're right hamare times pe jab hum school mein the aur grow up kar rahe the this was not such a huge issue but no. uh, looking at it from the point of view of being a minority then i can understand because uh, michelle jab log jaate hain as muslim pakistanis abroad right whether it's the us or anywhere else then it's kind of reversed not to that extent but depending on the political situation within uh, a country uh, yeah. they go through the same thing like you know fear for exactly. example yeah. after 9/11 and yeah. a lot of discrimination so i think mm -hmm. uh, इन एनी कंट्री ये इशूज होंगी लेकिन यहाँ पर लॉ एंड ऑर्डर सिचुएशन इतनी बुरी है सो हाउ हैली डिस्क्रिमिनेशन सो हाउ डू यू डील विद पाकिस्तान बट देव नॉट बिन एज कोई इतना कोई उस तरह का नहीं इशू मैंने फेस किया बट वॉट आई है यू नो वेन समथिंग लाइक दिस हैपन इट इफेक्ट्स यू रियली बैडली एज अट इफेक्ट्स यू एज अ पर्सन दैट यू नो ये क्यों मेरे साथ हुआ है देर आर इशूज लाइक दिस दैट हैपन बट आई थिंक यू जस्ट हैव टू डील विद इट एंड जस्ट मूव ऑन बिकॉज आई पर्सनली फील दैट this is this is where i am this is my country as much as it is anybody else's country I, as much as a pakistani as anyone else's and nobody has the right to discriminate against me jitna main main pakistani hu utna hi uh, i think some i at times i feel i'm more patriotic than a lot of people i know so i uh, i just deal with it in that manner and i try to do, do that to my teach my daughter that as well that you know uh, this is where we belong and this is home and uh, we are pakistanis and we have to love this country and it is us who you know my father used to always say um uh, there was a time in pakistan when a lot of people were leaving pakistan and going they were uh, moving mm -hmm. so a lot of people told my father why aren't you planning to go uh, situation is so bad in pakistan why don't you uh, take the family and and sort of move away move out so my father would always say that you know this is home and if something is wrong in your home you don't leave it you stay back and stay back and you try to fix it so uh, so this is where we are we will try to fix it we will continue to do what we have to do to try to fix the problem but yes it does affect us it affects us uh, 
psychologically it affects us after all we are human right Right. So it will yeah. impact. It does have its impact on us. There are yeah, many good people in Pakistan. Oh, I have uh, some of my be- my best of my friends are Muslims, and right. actually most of my friends are Muslims. Very <laughs> 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 few I don't have, but yeah, that is there. Of course, they they right. they. Uh, that's and that's what keeps the hope alive. You know, that's what I always say that there's such good people around that 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 proves that. uh pakistan hasn't lost its soul the soul is still there so uh we will we will overcome this yes absolutely, absolutely. and it, it and it's all the good work that people like you are doing you know us michel aap log ye bhi focus kar rahe ho kisi tarah uh, is it possible to educate the people about uh, you know how they behave with each other and not to get so obsessed with uh, differences इसके बारे में हम हम करते हैं हम यूथ के साथ काम करते हैं वी हैव यूथ वी हैव वर्कशॉप्स वी कॉल देम फ्रीडम ऑफ रिलीजन एंड बिलीफ वर्कशॉप्स एंड पीस बिल्डिंग वर्कशॉप्स वेर वी हैव यंग पीपल बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स फ्रॉम ऑल द रिलीजन क्रिश्चियन हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख मतलब ऑल ऑफ देम टूगेदर इन अ रूम फॉर थ्री डेज देर वी हैव अ थ्री डे वर्कशॉप and we just this is exactly what we do a peaceful coexistence how to uh, how to live together how to handle situations how to understand each other's religion and these uh, we have a group we we usually have a group of about 20 25 young people mm-hmm. and then they are then required to go out and hold these type of workshops in their own little communities so a trickle down effect hota hai so we have been doing this for the last 3 uh, 3 or 4 years now and it's been really good because of course jo to be very put it very crudely jo kharab ho chuke hain wo to ab ho chuke hain it is the youth that is going to come forward and take over tomorrow we we try to sort of bring them together we even we, we, we even had sessions where we uh, they've been taken on trips to religious places of worship and and you know the get people from there to talk to them our teams have gone out to different communities so they, we it's a proper program that we follow and these workshops are for 3 days we have uh, people come in to talk to them from the uh, from uh, you know speakers from various uh, uh, areas of uh, work and they come in and talk to them and a lot of activities involved so so yeah so that that we do that is basically with with young people uh, in order to create uh, some kind of a peaceful coexistence between for example aapki uh, foundation mein you also have your mother's name right your mother was an yes. important person in your life so oh, yes so and everybody knows about uh, cecil chaudhry and you know he's a huge yeah. figure in pakistan he also served as the principal of st anthony's school right yes i think he was there from 94 to 2009 and then uske baad he was principal of st mary's school in uh, rawalpindi mm-hmm. my mother uh, sadia was uh, like my father would always say you know there's always a woman behind every man so it was my mother who was behind him even in the in the air force days you know when my my parents got married when the 65 war uh, started they were just newly married abhi abhi unki shaadi hui thi and they were newly married and my father had left to fight the war and she was uh, and my mother was like a, you know a newly gulhan uh, just a new bride and right. there were chances that she may lose her husband in the war as well right. but uske uh, baad 71 ki war aayi usme bhi she was um, my father would always say that i was able to do what i was able to do because i had a very supportive wife who always took care of every told me you go do what you have to do don't worry about the home don't worry about the children i'll take care of them you worry about you know defending the country and doing what you have to do mm-hmm. so i thought about my mother in her own way did a lot of social work her she was also she always thought that education was very important so in her own capacity she has uh, she educated a lot of children who could not go to school she would pay for their fees and put them through schooling and so she was a lot she was involved a lot into social social work primarily in education so she was not like a teacher or anything she was just she was a housewife but she would do a lot of work uh, for the community in in this way so yeah so that and my mother was she, i was very very attached to her so that is what also the foundation carries forward it carries forward my father's work as a human rights activist 
and it carries forward my mother's uh, you know dream of education and educating people and and community development so that is how uh, it's taking forward both they were i mean i think that you are extremely brave and courageous and uh, you. your work is so inspirational and i i hope that you know, you, yeah. more people really learn from you and and learn to to contribute and and you're absolutely right i mean you're as much a pakistani as anyone else and maybe more so because uh, jo majority hai wo kabhi bhi itni contribute nahi karti jitne ke uh, yeah. i can see ke aap kar rahe ho well i feel it's very important because um bahut sare you know you have to uh, move away from yourself at times to to contribute in some kind of way. like my daughter was why do you have my daughter is really small and she was she was just she was just 9 years old and she was like why do you always have to go to these burnt places and not stay at home with me <laughs> like you know somebody has to do this so yeah so she understands that now that her mother has to do this kind of work and i take her with me everywhere she did she i try to teach her to do the same thing she uh, uh, had a, did, she said she wanted to do something so with some of my people from my office she went and she bought uh, coloring books and markers and paints and toys and and distributed these among the children over there and uh, so you know i tried to teach her that she should know that this is what uh, what if it's required by you to do then that is what you have to do and uh, uh, how about your siblings so so how about siblings i have i'm the only one in pakistan you and i will stay back right i will stay back <laughs> because you know i i although you know that there's a lot of pressure on me to with, with i have really hardly any family left in pakistan everyone is abroad somewhere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, and there's a lot of pressure that i should also think of you know moving out of pakistan but no this is where this is where i, am. I go <laughs> i go i visit i come back and uh, but that's uh, this is where i i am and this is where i'll be i guess Acha <coughs> Michelle how about your uh, growing up here so uh, you from Lahore um, no actually my mother was from Karachi okay. and my father was from Lahore but because being in the air force that's another nice thing about it that being in the air force we've been all over Pakistan yeah. so we've traveled like seen the uh, the complete uh, diversity that Pakistan has to offer so wherever he was posted we were living there so just lived all over the place but uh <laughs> then we also lived in iraq we were in baghdad for really? about 4 years my father was posted there okay. so we were there and uh, but when my father left the air force he decided to settle down in lahore okay. so this is where he wanted to be so then of course we went to college we were at kanade in uh, schooling that happened all over the place because we were like you know uh, eventually we were at the international school in baghdad where we completed so to say our schooling Mm-hmm. and then uh, we went to kanade to be studied in lahore education uh, was then in lahore and uh, in lahore is where we have been where we've settled so this is home so after kanade then uh, what did you do after that i did my bachelor's from kanade and then i went to do my law um, i did uh, did did my law but i never practiced it i did law but i never practiced because i uh, i went into i did a couple of courses on marketing and general management and then i was i started working at at dawn but the law uh, degree so to say has always been very useful because i can always sort of refer to it when i need to do need to understand something i was with dawn for for all those years i joined on in 95 and i was there till 2002 and uh, so we were i was uh, worked with them then i was i lived in malaysia for a couple of years i was in kuala lumpur for about 4 years Mm-hmm. Once when I came back, I was then heading the Don News TV channel, and uh, I was with the with the TV channel for about four years, and then I started CICF. Mm-hmm. So my growing up years have been really, really very interesting because as a child we 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 traveled so much and we saw so many different uh, parts of Pakistan. So that is that is a very rich uh, uh, something that I really value that I carry with me. ये तो फौजी आर्म फोर्सेस के साथ ये होता है ना यू 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 ऑल ऑफ यू गेट टू विजिट एंड सी सो मेनी पीपल प्लेसेस व्हिच एवरीबॉडी डजंट हैव दैट अपॉर्चुनिटी सो यू आर वेरी फॉर्चूनेट दैट वे व्हेन पाकिस्तानीज गो टू लिव अब्रॉड और इवन व्हेन दे ट्रैवल समटाइम्स दे एक्सपीरियंस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ओवर देयर और और दैट फीलिंग ऑफ बीइंग यू नो 
outsiders or the other just based on their religion right mm-hmm. so there's this perception uh, in the west that there are no christians or uh, religious minorities living in pakistan and it's like you know 100% a muslim country and there, mm-hmm. there is also this attitude where uh, people often complain that uh, people in the west they don't really care about the christian community in pakistan or in other countries where uh, they are kind of marginalized and mistreated so um why do you think that is and do you think that's even an accurate um, assessment of attitudes about 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 christians uh, outside pakistan uh, right. no i don't think that's i don't think that's that's completely true mm-hmm. because uh, uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, support from uh, uh to see is living outside mm-hmm. pakistan as well support in the sense moral support i get i get cards and letters from people from all over the mm-hmm. world just okay. encouraging messages that mm-hmm. to you know be brave and do what you do and you know we appreciate what you're doing us tarah se to support rehta hai and there there, there is a uh, there is a lot of support internationally as well but um, like uh, coming back to muslims living outside pakistan i always feel that you know when you even you uh, for how do i put this now for example agar um, america mein ya london mein muslims get affected or get harmed by any way ya get targeted by any way uh, the brunt of it is faced in pakistan by the christians you know what i mean wo yahan pe phir wahan pe agar kuch hota hai to pakistan mein church ko jala denge या किसी बस्ती में शोर मचा देंगे कि जी हम वाई आर द क्रिस्टन ऑफ पाकिस्तान ऑलवेज लिंक्ड टू द वेस्ट वी फॉर नथिंग टू डू विद द वेस्ट वी आर एज मच पाकिस्तानी एज यू आर अ पाकिस्तानी यू नो सो सो हमेशा वो बिकॉज ऑफ द रिलीजन आपको लिंक कर देते हैं वेस्ट के साथ हालांकि कोई ताल्लुक नहीं है वुमन हु वर्क्स इन माय ऑफिस शी वॉज कमिंग टू वर्क वंस एंड शी गॉट ऑन टू द पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड शी हैड अ क्रॉस in her she had a chain with a cross on and the bu- guy on the bus told her hey, why are you tum idhar kyu ho tum chali jao america apne mulk i mean kyunki aap christian hai america is not your mulk bhai why is, the religion is always we, we are always compared uh, associated with the west hum utne hi hai jitne aap pakistani hai hum yahi ke hai we we, we we born here our, our ancestors were born here so just because the, of the religion you can't uh, sort of you know link us with any other part of the world but yes jab duniya mein kahi bhi kuch hota hai uh, to muslims the christians in pakistan ab jaise wo new zealand mein hua tha to uh, that incident uh, sparked a lot of uh, fear in pakistan ki ab yahan pe next you know how are they going to because in the lower christian communities jab itni qurbat hai itni poverty itni uh lack of education hai to wo udhar to then it start taking it out on on the people living there ke ji aap wahan pe ye kiya to ab hum yahan pe bhi yahi karein i think logon ko zyada ek dusre se milne ki zarurat hai exposure nahi hai and i i don't understand why people have to live in different communities right jis tarah aap mujhe bata rahe ho ke is area mein christians rehte hain so it's also like it makes no sense they easier to target people don't mix with each other ghetto is the environment mm-hmm. that gets created just just way i think jo jo non muslims hai uh, christians ho gaye hindu ho gaye whatever other religions so some they feel safe living among their own communities right. okay, if we are somewhere else we would be maybe more, more vulnerable which is not right which which i to to a certain extent i can understand mm-hmm. but i don't i don't encourage it because i think everybody should work live as a community Hmm. and uh, it, it's then that you know you try to live more peacefully and and coexist with each other right. so bahut zaruri hai pakistan mein is waqt what is most important is to to try to promote a peaceful coexistence of all religions together it is it is very very important hmm. so um, i think that that needs to be worked upon if you had to give any kind of advice to the youth of this country what would that be how can they help improve the country their own lives the lives of minorities and to ensure a safe environment so that all pakistanis feel equally safe i would, I would come back to to my father's quote on this this is what i always tell the youth that be a good human being 
and try to if you if you bring you know be the change you want to see kind of a situation don't try to change the world it's not going to change try to change yourself and then you will see the change happening so so you know um pehle aap insaan to acche bane hmm. insaan acche banenge insaniyat apne andar layenge to khud ba khud cheeze uh you know start falling into place so i always tell younger people today that you know you're all enthusiastic okay, i'm going to change the world i'm going to do this don't try to change the world because you cannot change the world but you can change yourself by changing yourself you are changing the world so try to be a better human being give your country the most this country gives us our identity so we have to give this country something then we give our best to pakistan and it's only when we give our best to pakistan can we expect pakistan to become a better place yeah this is what this is this is what we have this country is what our ancestors have left for us to take forward and this is what we are going to give to our children so let's try to make it a good a better a place every single day right and if we all make an effort there is hope i mean i know at this point Absolutely. people are very hopeless in the country but yeah it really depends on our attitudes and our willingness to exactly. make an effort the solution is not leaving the country and going away so many people have left the country and going away but the solution is staying staying here and you know especially in these last few months mm-hmm. uh, there's been a, a massive amount of people that have left pakistan and gone but uh, you know the, the solution is staying here and and uh, trying to resolve the issue and uh, give it all you have i am i i was raised by a man who gave his all to pakistan i mean my father gave everything he had to pakistan in in fact sadia you know and he was suffering from lung cancer and it was his last uh, just last few days mm-hmm. and uh, he was talking to somebody and he said they said do you have any regrets or anything he said yeah if if if, uh, if god feels that i have done what i could do for this country if he thinks my work on earth is done then fine he can take me but if uh, there is still if there is still something i can if i feel that if there is still something more i can do to thoda sa time aur de de taki main kuch aur is mulk ke liye kar lo so so you know um, that is the kind of spirit i try to pass on to others as well ke isko to hum nahi theek karna hai na it's it's theek hai there are a lot of issues and politics and all sorts of things but just try to uh, try to from your own within your community don't try to change pakistan or apne community ko behtar karo and and it's, it's it will sort of start spreading well i think you you doing phenomenal work michelle and uh, the country should be proud of people like you and i really want to thank you uh, for talking to me for taking out the time actually i know you have a very yeah, thank you sadia thank you for uh, inviting me thank you for talking to me yeah thank you for the work that you are doing and highlighting the work of people in pakistan and what they're doing and and you know giving it that importance that it needs so thank you thank you so much thank you sir.